Martin, uh, you and I share a parish. <laughs> we do, yes. We yes. haven't always uh, shared the same political perspective. But we've uh, always shared the same faith. We have shared the same faith. And tell us a little bit about your own faith upbringing. Well, I was born in Dayton, Ohio, uh, to uh, two uh, uh, immigrants uh, from uh, Europe. My father was uh, uh, from Spain. My mother was from Ireland, and uh, she had 12 pregnancies, 10 survived, nine boys and one girl. My dad worked at the National Cash Register Company, a factory in Dayton, Ohio. That was the main headquarters, and he worked there for almost 47 years, and so we saw uh, what it was to struggle and what it was to have a, an underlying uh, uh, faith that really held everything together. Our lives were not about advancement for money, but growth in our humanity. And uh, consequently, the parish had a very, very powerful influence in our life. The church was really an extension of the Gospels. We were taught that uh, uh, love of neighbor meant service to neighbor. And one fundamental uh, through line was, you know, you serve yourself best by serving others first. And mm -hmm. that meant the world to us. So often our political figures in the past uh, have been the messengers of fear. Yes. And yeah. goodness knows there's r real reason to be anxious yeah. these days. And yet the interesting thing about this time, and especially the message of Senator Obama, is one of hope. Isn't it really remarkable that we can, be con we can be confronted with the most difficult time in perhaps our nation's modern history, and yet this individual has come among us to remind us that we, in fact, can accomplish a great deal? Mm -hmm. Our futures are inextricably linked. You know, whether you're rich or poor, black and white, old or young, no matter where you live in the country, there's no getting out of here unless we all get out of here together. Right. And that's how we've hit the bottom now. And we have a potential leader that says, you know, let's hold hands and walk out of this together. So much of his life seems to be shaped uh, from these uh, experiences that he had as a young man mm -hmm. uh, with the Catholic Campaign for Human mm -hmm. Development. Where and you remember the, the, the opponents in the Republican convention dismissed him as a community, community organ organizer. <laughs> I wanted to shout out. Uh, Cesar Chavez was a community <laughs> organizer. Martin Luther, Luther King, King Jr. was a community organizer. Okay. Jesus the Christ was a community organizer. Well, Senator Obama has tapped a, an, a resource of energy and passion and true hope that frankly I haven't seen in my life uh, since uh, 1968 with the possibility of Robert Kennedy's election. That was the last politician really that we heard speak in a compassionate tone. You know, the genius of the Kennedy administration was that he brought so many of what were called uh, later the best and the brightest, you know. And uh, I get this same feeling from Barack Obama. He's already uh, uh, gathered around him in the campaign, and he's already projecting a administration with some of the best and brightest among mm -hmm. us, not just uh, Democrats and not the... Uh, well, in fact, uh, one of the closest uh, friends of his in the Senate is Dick Luger, is it not? And yes, they worked strongly... Yes. Uh, and the foreign relations. And, yeah. and the foreign relations Yes, committee. yes. And, uh, so we, we can, you know, virtually be assured of a, an intelligent and uh, uh, very, very uh, diverse group of men and women uh, of experience and of great energy and intelligence that he's going to bring into the government. And I think that that's one of the great um, uh, aspects of his leadership, the attraction he has for bringing good and decent, bright and committed people into government. The, the real affection between he and uh, his Michelle, as, I mean his wife oh, and yeah. the children, right. to see them together at off moments that are few and precious in the, during these the last Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the bop and, but just the way uh, they reflect to each other during they can that. Complete each came, other's sentence. Yeah, when he came, uh, when she came out after his speech at Mile High Stadium when he accepted the uh, nomination, uh, you could tell, I, I couldn't read the lips, but I know what he said to her, how you think it went. Right. And she was reassuring him. Right. And they have that that partnership, that relationship, that, and they're so playful with each other. They are so 
obviously in love, and those children are such a reflection well, of that love. It's just, it's enviable to see them and say, oh my, my. There's something about him that, that is so engaging. It is a reflection of his humanity, his compassion. It's about being human. It's about service. And it's about taking risks and accepting the consequences no matter what they are, but never being hampered by them, that even if something bad comes down, he will take and turn it into something positive. And in my lifetime, there were really only two political leaders that had those qualities. One was John Fitzgerald Kennedy, and the other was his brother, Robert. And I have not seen the likes of those two until Senator Obama came on the scene. And in that sense, I have a, I have a feeling that I can, can give to the future what was taken from us in the past with both murders of John and Robert Kennedy. We have an embodiment of that compassion, that hope, that level of humanity for the future. And I could not be happier that in my lifetime, I'm seeing it again. Thank you.